What's going on, everybody? I am that driving guy, and my office gets me where I'm going. If this is your first time, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell, and hit all, and that way you're notified every time I drop a video. And don't forget to hit up the description box for some essentials that can help you along the way as you're out there dashing. So, as most of you may know by now, uh, DoorDash has updated its terms and conditions. So for those of you who may not have read through everything, I'm going to give you a summary. So the whole update of the terms and conditions are solely based off of the premise of separation. And what I mean by that is it seems in the terms and conditions, DoorDash is illustrating their separation from us as dashers. We are not affiliated with each other. We are our own separate entity from DoorDash. We don't represent DoorDash. We are independent contractors. In a way we do, but overall, we are independent contractors. So DoorDash does not have control over anything that we do. They can't tell us how to dress, how to speak, how to conduct ourselves. They can't tell us how to deliver the orders. They can't tell us what we deliver them in, whether on foot, on a bike, in a car. They have no control over that. There is no one in DoorDash that we answer to. Okay, so they really are, they, they are making that clear that they have no control over that. They also point out how they have the right to send out orders to whichever orders they feel is for the best dasher is how they send out the orders. So they have the a choice. They can pick and choose what orders go to what dashers. Just like we have a choice on which orders we accept or decline. So they talk about that as well. They also mention that we are not obligated to do anything for DoorDash, for the restaurants, or for a customer until we accept an order. We are not obligated to do anything until we accept that order. Now, when we accept that order, we are contract contractually obligated to deliver and complete that order, right? So they talk about that and, and make that a point. Uh, they also mention about the taxes we're responsible for. All of our expenses are gas. If we wanted workers comp, anything like that, we would have to be responsible for getting that. DoorDash does not give any of that. Do DoorDash does not deal with any employee related things because we are not employees. And they really um, make that point. And it got me thinking like, okay, why did they update the terms and conditions? What's going on here? Um, and why are they stressing this point so much? The fact that uh, we are not a part of them. We're not even partially employed by DoorDash. We aren't employed by DoorDash at all. We are partners with them, right? We teamed up with DoorDash uh, or partnered up with DoorDash in order uh, for us to be able to make money using our phone and our car. So DoorDash basically gave us this opportunity. Beyond that, they owe us nothing. And that's what the terms and conditions are are pointing out. Beyond what their terms and conditions are or their standards are on what, what we supposed to do and why we are here, they make that very clear. The only time that we are obligated to do anything is when we accept an order. And that's when we have to complete that order regardless of anything. So they put that out there. Now, if you're looking at the business model of this whole thing, honestly, us as as us as dashers, we're all alone out here, right? Um, DoorDash doesn't care about gas prices. They don't care about our expenses. They don't care about any of that, which is cool. And I understand that. I mean, they gave the opportunity. What more? do they owe us as dashers, right? Um, they, they make clear that they do not guarantee any particular amount of money that you will receive as a dasher for dashing 
for any certain amount of time and they do not guarantee any certain amount of orders either. So it is up to us to pick and choose what we take, what's going to work best for us, what's going to help us reach our goals. So beyond that, DoorDash doesn't owe us anything else. And if you're thinking logically, let's think about it. Okay, DoorDash provided a service that was not here before. So they provided an opportunity for us to go out, use our phone and our car to get money for us. DoorDash provided that, right? They connected with restaurants. They're helping restaurants be able to get more customers using their platform, right? Of course, you know, the restaurants are providing the service for the customers because they're providing the food. And that's the reason why customers are going to that platform to order and other merchants as well, because DoorDash delivers everything now. So those other merchants are servicing the customer. Their whole existence is for the customer. The reason they're in business is because of the customer, right? So, of course, the customer makes all of this go around. And I've mentioned this in some other videos as well. But the customers make everything go around. DoorDash is catering the customers. The restaurants are catering the customers because that's how they get their money. So then I look at us as dashers. What are we contributing? Right? The opportunity was given to us when there was no opportunity. DoorDash connects us with restaurants and customers. What are we giving in the equation? We're not doing anything for DoorDash, right? We're not doing anything for the restaurants and we're not doing anything for the customers. Everything that we do, we do for us. I'm out here getting money using my car and my phone and make money for me. I don't split it with DoorDash. I don't split it with the customer or the restaurants, right? And I'm able to get all this money without even having to put anything in. I didn't have to invest in this. I don't pay no fees or none of that to DoorDash. You see what I'm saying? They gave me this opportunity and I'm running with it. So beyond that, they really don't owe anything to us because we ain't put nothing in. We contribute nothing to this equation. And I've heard some people say, you know, well, okay, well, DoorDash is a luxury, right? Having food delivered to you is a luxury. Okay, I understand. I understand that premise. I get it. I don't necessarily agree with it because it's like, this is food. When it comes to food, I don't feel like anyone should have control over whether or not another person eats, right? But regardless, it's a luxury, not a necessity, which means us as dashers, we are not a necessity. We are a luxury, right? So DoorDash can easily say, well, you know what? Let's just hire employees because this is a luxury. It's not a necessity. We'll hire employees, pay employees $15 because they're already doing it in New York with the groceries. And we don't have to worry about the independent contractors. So then that'll be taking the opportunity away from us. So, you know, you really got to think beyond DoorDash because if they're updating these terms and conditions right now, it's for a reason. Right. Something may have happened for them to do this. And who knows what the next thing may be? Who knows what their next move may be? So that's why I encourage people to invest in yourself. Think beyond DoorDash. And the next videos that I'll be doing is a playlist um, entitled Thinking Beyond DoorDash. And I'm going to just tell you all about some other opportunities that are available. Some things that I am doing and hopefully uh, following these things will help you create wealth. And that's what it's all about. You see what I'm saying? DoorDash is cool and you can make as much money as you want, but it doesn't create a passive income. You see what I'm saying? You can't retire off of it unless you do something with the money that you're making, right? If you don't DoorDash or you don't do any gigs or anything like that, you don't get no money. It doesn't continue. So I want to encourage people to do things to create passive income, to build up wealth. And that's what my next videos are going to be about. It's going to be about thinking beyond DoorDash. But for you, all of you who have not read the terms and conditions, that's a, a 
maybe not word for word, but that's a pretty good summary of what it's talking about. It's really stressing its separation, how we're separate from DoorDash, how we are our own private business. And, um, you know, we are not obligated to do anything until we accept an order. So hopefully we don't lose this opportunity you know what I'm saying? Because I think it's a great opportunity for us to be able to do the things that we do and have control over our time. But also at the same time, you have to think forward. You have to think ahead. And if all of this falls down, you want to have a plan and something else to move forward to. So check out my next videos about thinking beyond DoorDash, where I'll talk about things like investing and in, um and, and starting a business, you know what I'm saying? Like things like this. If you're interested in those types of things, check out my next videos. And I hope that that is a spark. I hope that that's something that will encourage all of you all to learn more about these other things that I'm going to talk about. So as always, man, I always appreciate y'all for watching. Um, hit up the comments. Let me know what you all think about the channel so far. And as always, I appreciate y'all again. And as always, I'm a holler.